Thank you, Representative Sewell. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Johnson brought up some, brought up some harrowing. harrowing history uh, in our country uh, where Republicans who had African-American support were elected and threatened. Uh, these were in, I think, 1873. Right, during Reconstruction. Yeah. Uh, can you, do you know in your experience as a student at Oxford and Princeton and Harvard, uh, of instances in the last 40 years where similar incidents have occurred? Yes, sir. I don't have to use my educational background. I can use my experience growing up in Selma, Alabama, and my experience as a member of Congress witnessing the changes that have been made in my own district. In my own district, people were denied the opportunity to get a driver's license after a restrictive law was passed by the state of Alabama's legislature. That restrictive law required certain IDs. An ID, we understand. Understanding, being able to say who you are is not a problem. It's the type of IDs. You know, my father, Coach Andrew Ray Sewell, in his latter years, had a massive stroke and was in a wheelchair. He proudly voted at every election. But after the 2013 decision in Shelby, and after Alabama imposed its restrictive photo ID law, which no longer allowed a validly issued federal ID, a social security card to be presented to show proof of who you were in order to get your ballot. He had a hard time getting a photo ID. Well, not because he was black, but because he was disabled. Do you know that the Dallas County Courthouse doesn't have a ramp that get people who are disabled into that courthouse in order to get a free photo ID? from the voter registrar. And that is because it was grandfathered in the ADA law. So sir, I have to tell you my own personal experience. Dad woke up early that morning. We were blessed to have a van that, has a, that kneels down so his wheelchair could go in. We were blessed to be able to have home help, to help him into that courthouse and to get that photo ID. So many of my constituents, and I would say all of our constituents, who are disabled may not have that same right. Thank you, Ms. Sewell. Uh, and Dallas County, is that, that's where John Lewis uh, had his march, is it not? Where he was that's right. beaten on the, the Pettus Bridge to try to get the Voting Rights Act passed. That's right. Not just John Lewis, but so many known and unknown Americans, black and white, from various religious backgrounds, had the temerity. Ordinary Americans to really plead to this country to this government that um, we live up to the constitutional ideals of democracy and justice for all. And while we live in a time where people don't have to count how many marbles are in a jar, I would submit to you that we still live in times where there are modern day barriers to voting. And as long as there are modern day barriers to voting, we as a Congress should be trying to institute and reinstate a coverage formula in section four I would submit to you that mine and HR4 is the right one. But I would also submit to you that all of us who see these injustices know that any formula that would allow preclearance where there's been a demonstrated history of this of voter discrimination in that state or, or, or subdivision would be merited. And can you tell us if Mr. Mr. Collins uh, and Mr. Johnson maybe as well mentioned section two and section three, can you tell us why those are not sufficient? Well, in the Calera case, the case, the Shelby County versus Holder case, uh, which was a case brought by an African-American uh, who was a city council member. He was the only black city council member in Calera. When he was up for reelection, Calera, the city of Calera, voted to redistrict all of the um, districts for um, elections to city council to make it an at-large election. It's true he could have brought a section two violation, but the reality is you can't unring the bell. He lost that election because the minority vote had been diluted by moving from a ward-based or district-based election to an at-large election. So I just have to say that 
Well, on its face, even Alabama's efforts to close down the DMVs. I talked to uh, my, Repu my Republican governor, who was a good friend, and I said, what gives? 31 of those DMVs are in my district. And now you, you've now have in place in 2014, this really um, more restrictive photo ID law. And he said, oh, it wasn't because of that. It was because of budgetary cuts. Now that on its face is true. But we as elected officials, when faced with the fact that the effect of it was limiting the opportunity of a certain population of people to having access to the most popular form of photo ID, a, a driver's, driver's license, license. We, we have, have to, to do, do the right thing. thing. We, we have, have to do the right thing. Thank you. Mr. Johns, would you like any time? Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your appearance and uh, Thank you for your sponsorship of the building, your service.